What about the environment uh, first? Just understanding, like even in Australia alone. I mean, I know you we're, we're going to, you know, we're talking about North America. We've done other episodes with you now talking about moving into Peru and, and operations in Africa. But um, I wanted to, even in Australia, like how, how varying are the actual environments that these crushes are being deployed in? Well, the uh, environments can be quite varied. They can be uh, from aggregate production, um, working with uh, quite hard but not necessarily abrasive rock, uh, through to a wide range of different um, mining materials uh, like uh, gold ores, copper ores, uh, iron ore. And they can be um, specific for um, particular, looks like the West Australian uh, flies have got us. <laughs> yeah, they can be um, ranging in anything from um, two or 300 tonnes an hour plants up to uh, um, two or 3,000 tonnes an hour plants. So um, the capacity and size of the crushes will all be chosen to, depending on the size of the plant. And that will impact on uh, the durability of the machines. Uh, the bigger crushes tend to be designed to be more durable. Um, also, the type of rock that they're crushing, if it's a highly abrasive material, then um, that will tend to mean that the life of the wear parts um, will be lower. Uh, and in some cases where the um, plants are quite well optimised, they, they run the plants very much at um, almost a full capacity. Um, a lot of plants are uh, installed with a particular design capacity, say um, two and a half thousand tonnes per hour. And the mining operators themselves are constantly um, de-bottlenecking the plants and they'll often five or six years after the plant's been started, they'll be running at 20 or 30 percent higher than it was originally designed for. So um, that puts a lot of extra pressure on the operation of the individual crushes and screening units. And that's what gives us the opportunity to look at how we can optimize the performance of those crushes and how we can squeeze that extra bit of juice out of them, so to speak. So then, the, Frank, on the engineering side, how, or how often are you engineering based? Like how is it how often before the are you getting involved before the crusher actually gets deployed versus when it's already been in operation for, for an extended period of time and then they're seeing, okay, we, where is the common place that HE parts is getting involved? Or so most of the time, yeah, most of the time we get involved um, after the fact. So when, once the, the crusher has already been in operation and, you know, that's like Mike was saying is, you know, when, when the crusher gets uh, started, then they start ramping up production, which right. then all of a sudden they need to get, you know, additional uh, output from these crushers. And that's sort of like where we get involved most of the time. I'm saying most of the time because, you know, we've been working with a, cu a couple of uh, our customers and, um, you know, they were moved into different roles. And then with new plants, you know, because we've built a relationship and they know essentially the quality product that we have, we've actually started uh, working with them on on new plant designs as well so but for the majority of of uh times that we get involved it's normally just after you know after they had the the crushers in for a couple of years so i might not just like okay. to add to that that, yeah. that comes about also though largely because uh, until they've operated the plants for a period of time they don't really start getting an understanding of what's working well and what's not so um it's better for them to have some operating experience with the plant so they can find out where the plant needs some improvement or where it's working really well. And then that gives us better um, ideas on where we can help the customers as well. 